Today we'll take a look at how to configure our SQL Server account to be used within SnapLogic. To do that, we need to create a SQL, uh, SQL Server account uh, object in SnapLogic, and there's two main ways to do that. One is simply in the designer, you can actually drag and drop one of these SQL Server snaps onto the canvas and create an account dynamically within the project folder of this pipeline. Or you can create the account within the manager in any project, uh, project spaces of your choice. In our demonstration today, we'll simply be looking at the dynamic account creation here uh, in the designer. I'm going to drag and drop the SQL Server Select Snap on the canvas, and you can actually use any other SQL Server Snap uh, to do this as well. And initially, the system is going to give you a set of pre-configured accounts uh, that someone else may have created in your system. Right now, we're just going to create, uh, create a new account and select the SQL Server account option. We'll go ahead and populate all the values and we'll go through each field uh, individually. All right, to begin, you want to give it the account name so that you can see uh, what this account really represents. After that, the host name really depends on essentially where you host a SQL instance. It can be on, in this case, AWS RDS or on premise. If you do have an on premise instance of SQL Server, you just be, need to be sure that this pipeline can be run via a concept of a ground place. The port number is typically defaulted into uh, 1433. You will be providing it with a uh, database, default database name, username, and password. The SQL Server JDBC driver class should be kept default as to, uh, for this, with this value. And if you have any custom uh, version, uh, if you want to use any custom version of SQL Server JDBC driver, hit this plus sign, hit this uh, database icon to either select a pre-uploaded jar file or upload a version of yourself by clicking on the upload button. And that will just go ahead and retrieve a file from your local storage. From that point forward, the advanced properties and URL properties are very generic JDBC property values. Here you can select whether or not to perform auto commit, um, set the batch sizes and fetch sizes, the pull size for the connection, and then the lifetime value. You can also select idle timeout and checkout timeout as well. Feel free to experiment with these values, and if you have any questions, hover your mouse over uh, the specific field will give you a snippet about what this field really represents. And lastly, the URL properties is a set of key value pairs you can use to pass along with the JDBC connection. In this case, by default, the select method we will need to pass, pass into SQL Server is the cursor. Okay. Once you have everything set, hit the validate button. And the system is going to perform validation and tell you whether or not it's successful via this message. If you run into any issues, feel free to contact uh, SnapLogic support, um, reference the documentation, as well as visit our community site for any additional assistance. Thank you.